Last time on this channel, we took a look at some classes of computers. At that point of time, I told you that, you know, these terms weren't in very high usage today, so we were really looking at the subject from a point of view of historical interest. We're gonna be doing the same thing today, but instead of looking at computers, let us instead turn our attention to the different classes of memory. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome to another Random Wednesday episode. Now, contrary to the fact that, you know, these terms aren't in very common usage, these technologies may still be. Some of them even use extremely interesting techniques to achieve, you know, what needs to be achieved, which is why I felt I should share it. We should work our way through how all these components actually work, and yeah, just to gain some insight. Before we begin, let us discuss memory in general. There are two different types of memory, volatile memory and non-volatile memory. Now, volatile memory refers to memory that requires power to retain data. These sorts of memory have the advantage of being faster, and also as a side effect of the fact that they can't hold memory when unpowered, they also tend to be more secure. The disadvantage is obvious, you can't use this as a form of long-term storage. So there's that. Your computer RAM is a good example of volatile memory. Today, we're more interested in non-volatile memory. That is a piece of memory that will be able to retain information even if power is completely removed. Strictly speaking, when we say non-volatile memory, we can refer to anything that has that property. From flash drives to hard drives to floppy disks to CDs, all of them are considered non-volatile memory. Of course, today we're going to limit ourselves to just electronic means of storing data. That means we won't be looking at hard drives or CDs or things like that. Instead, what we are looking at are things that exist in a chip form. Starting with the ROM. ROM stands for read-only memory, and it is the most straightforward way to implement a piece of memory that cannot be overwritten but can be read many times. All you have to do to construct a piece of ROM is to simply plan out a circuitry, you know, that will return zeros and ones based on your input, and basically just build that circuit. Once you put that circuitry into a chip, you have a ROM. ROMs are often used to implement things like firmware, you know, on embedded systems or on other systems where, you know, the logic is unlikely to ever need to change. Of course, their use is getting a little less common, seeing as that even embedded electronics these days may require things like firmware updates. So you cannot bake the firmware onto a ROM that cannot be changed. ROMs tend to be more practical for mass production. It would be expensive to, you know, as a manufacturer to make just one for the purposes of testing or research, which is why some other alternatives to that have come up. First up is PROM which stands for Programmable Read-Only Memory. The idea is this, when you first get a piece of PROM chip, it's considered blank. There is no data held within. What you have to do is you have to burn your data onto the ROM itself, and then in the future, it can be read back, just like a normal ROM would. The implementation is the really cool part. Inside the ROM, what you have are actually a whole array of fuses. To burn a PROM, what you actually have to do is you have to overload particular fuses and actually blow the fuses. By doing this in a particular pattern, you are actually encoding data onto the chip itself. Obviously, in normal use, the fuses aren't supposed to blow, but if you have a search or anything along those lines, you could possibly damage the chip. But that is a solution to making a writable ROM of sorts. Now, the alternative to a PROM is what is known as a mask ROM. Similarly to the PROM, it starts off blank, but instead of blowing fuses to write data onto the chip itself, what you do instead is you use a process called photolithography. As its name implies, essentially what you're doing is you have to mask out a circuit on paper and then shine a UV light through that mask so that, well, the parts that are exposed by the UV light 
actually gets encoded onto the chip itself. And that is how you form the various connections you need to set up a circuit and encode data on the chip itself. Similar to PROM, there are practicality concerns. For example, if during the write state, you accidentally mess something up, well, that chip can be thrown away because you cannot fix something that you've already burned in. So for a more practical use case, we might want to consider erasure, the ability to undo some of the changes that were made. And that is where we have the more advanced types of memory. For example, EEPROM. EEPROM stands for Erasable Programmable ROM. And now what we can do is after encoding, we can actually go through a process of erasing the contents. EEPROMs are interesting because they are a little like PROMs and a little like mask ROMs. You see, you actually write to an EEPROM by using a higher current. To erase from this chip, you need to actually expose it to UV light. In fact, EEPROMs have a little window at the top and that is where you actually have to shine the UV light onto the chip. What is interesting is some chips in production are actually EEPROMs. What that means is they actually need to have a sticker at the center of the chip to cover up that little window so that you know sunlight doesn't accidentally come in and erase the chip and that could render parts of the device useless. So yeah, that's a very interesting fact. In fact, even though you know things like EEPROM seem to be something that you just use for research and testing in the lab, in fact, sometimes they are released out into the wild as well. So EEPROM still has its fair share of problems which is why in the next part, we're going to be looking at the EE prompt. A double E prompt actually stands for an electronically erasable programmable ROM. And the idea is, well, you read and write to it via electric current. It contains a series of what is known as floating gate transistors. The whole idea is you give it enough current, it stores a little bit of the electrons inside these transistors, and that will be used to represent data. Not forgetting, of course, that this is non-volatile memory, meaning that even if it's unpowered, the data is still there. This is in fact a precursor to a device that we are very familiar with today, and these are flash drives. Flash drives work very similarly to EE prompts, seeing as that, well, it is a piece of non-volatile memory that you can read to and write from using an electric current. And there you have it. These are the different types of memory, some of them do use very innovative ways to either write to or erase from that particular chip. Some of these, despite sounding like quite dated ways of doing things, may still be in use today, you know, for whatever reason, probably cost related. And even though we don't hear of these terms in day to day speech, they do describe technologies that we may be using on a day to day basis. So yeah, that's it. I hope you gained some insight in particular, you know, into some of the interesting techniques in which data can be written or erased. That's all there is for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.